services. Um, been a physical therapist for 32 years with a fairly extensive background now for probably the last 15 in treating temporomandibular disorders and oral facial pain. And given that October 7th is trigeminal neuralgia awareness to help raise awareness to this uh, very painful and, and uh, somewhat debilitating condition, I just wanted to put a little uh, sort of anatomical video together to uh, give practitioners as well as uh, you know patients uh, or loved ones <clears throat> some insight to the nature of uh, where the trigeminal nerve resides and some of the three uh, extensive courses it sort of covers uh, in our entire facial and head area. So I'm using here uh, an application uh, through a company called Visible Body. They have some great uh, products out there for clinicians like myself to uh, look at muscle attachments, nerve, blood vessels, uh, you know, obviously the internal organs, etc. So here I've created an example for you um, <clears throat> uh, just to show you the left side for now because when I show you the right side I will have removed some of these structures. But uh, through this area would normally be covered by our temporalis muscle. Here is uh, what we call our frontal bone. It's part of our right forehead area. Over here, uh, we then have our parietal bone. And then we have our temporal bone, <clears throat> which is fairly significant. And as you can see, it also forms sort of a half, the half the portion of our, our, our maxillary arch or our zygomatic bone, but also runs underneath through the ear. And of course, if the temporal mandibular joint was here, it's uh, right near that area as well. Many of you, many of you have maybe received treatment from other physical therapists, massage people, craniosacral therapists to try and get some relief. You may have heard them discuss the sphenoid bone. Uh, that is uh, through this area that we can access through various palpations to try and uh, have an effect uh, on these suture lines in areas that we feel when these nerves exit our brain and through our uh, very our skull and our suboccipital areas into our facial area. We're hoping that we can try to affect um, just a change and altercation to the nervous system. Obviously, this is something that's very difficult to try to explain and certainly, you know, hasn't been proven in research. But obviously, many of us that are clinicians feel we've been able to alter uh, people's symptoms that have been dealing with numerous nerve injuries over the year, whether it's cervical nerve, nerve or radicular arm pain, or in this case, um, you know, trigeminal neuralgia, we have some success in reducing the severity and frequency of their symptoms. By no mean am I proposing that this is a cure, but maybe an alternative if other things have failed or, um, you know, surgery is obviously a very scary and risky situation for this. Uh, so trying to find a clinician that could do some of these things would be great. And another area to highlight here, uh, this is the zygomatic uh, arch or bone, of course, of our cheekbone area. And then there's some through the eye uh, in the nasal area that we will also uh, work on. Now, let me flip this person around here and help orient you, right? So I've kind of faded out all these various areas here. Let me move this over a tad and zoom in a little bit more and give you an idea now if as we're looking kind of into the brain area here, I've tried to highlight for you. Let me see if I can increase this a tad. This area here, so this is a portion of our brain stem called the pons. The pons is where the trigeminal nucleus resides. And here, if I angle this just right, you can see, let me move this up, <clears throat> you can see Cranial nerve five right here, the trigeminal nerve right here. And then this body here we call the trigeminal ganglion. And then many of you probably know by now that there are three divisions of the trigeminal nerve, hence why it's called, right, tri for three. This portion here is the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve five. This portion here that I'm unhighlighting, right, in blue here and re-highlighting is the maxillary portion. And then I'll tip this a little, a little bit more down, but then I've got to raise it up so it's not out of your field here. We have the mandibular, 
the third branch or division. That's the mandibular portion, right? And you can see how many of them go through these various areas of interface through our skull plates, or in this case, the rotundum. Um, and, and all we're hoping is that by some good imparting forces that we will do, osteopathic techniques through these cranial bones, that we can try to, again, impart some kind of stimulus into the nervous system since we know, right, with trigeminal neuralgia that the nervous system has sort of short-circuited a tad. Um, there's various different neurodynamic tension things that we can do to try to stress this area and tissue and see again if we can just impart a change or provide some added mobility, right, or just a subtle positional change uh, that can make the difference between having, you know, significant debilitating uh, symptoms to, to minimal. Um, and so let's kind of follow this around a little bit more now as I turn this sort of forward facing and move it over for you to see. And then what I went and did was just highlight all the different branches so you can appreciate all the areas that, uh, that this can unfortunately cause symptoms in. All right here. So what I've tried to do here is kind of give you a little glimpse of the, uh, here's a portion, um, right? So this is kind of in our upper uh, ophthalmolic area here. It's very sensitive to touch the right areas here. This is going to give you a glimpse of the, uh, come on, it's not cooperating. I apologize. So bear with me here. It's my first time uh, doing this sort of live and on the fly. So as always, I guess I have to kind of work out a few, a uh, few bugs along the way. There we go. All right. It is just not cooperating, so I apologize. There we go. All right. So here, when I'm re-highlighting, that's your super trochlea uh, nerve. That's a branch uh, coming off the that V1 area, that ophthalmolic area. So you can imagine, right, if you're having frontal headache, frontal forehead related sharp shooting lancinating symptoms, this is the supraorbital. And the supraorbital, like in the clinic here, we will palpate this little area here, kind of in the middle of your uh, eyebrow area where you can feel a little fissure. That's where that supraorbital nerve will exit, just like below the eye socket here, right? We have the infraorbital. I'm going to try to unhighlight it and notice all the blue that lights up. So again, for people having symptoms also in their whole maxillary area, right? You can appreciate, you know, all these areas where this nerve tissue runs. Look at inside the eye, all this blue area is a portion of the cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. And then as I pivot, pivot this around, now imagine right in through here is your ear, your temporal mandibular joint, which I had to remove because you couldn't see it. But here's something called the arculotemporal nerve, right? So that's, that's pretty extensive. I mean, that is a pretty extensive portion all along kind of the side of our head, uh, in front of our ear area, near our temporal mandibular joint that patients could experience sharp shooting, lancinating pain and symptoms. And then again, I've removed the jawbone all through here in the temporal mandibular joint, just to give you a glimpse. Uh, this is the lateral pterygoid muscle that if you've ever had some TMJ related issues um, uh, and the medial pterygoid muscle through here. Uh, so again, that's why sometimes we feel too, if we're doing good soft tissue work externally and also intraorally to these areas, accessing some of these cranial uh, bones like the maxilla, your upper maxillary arch, doing various neurodynamic tensions through your mandible to stretch the mandibular nerve, the lower portion of the uh, cranial nerve five. There's just a variety of things that we can try to do, again, to affect a change into this your nervous system to hopefully provide some relief. So here is a portion of the buccal nerve, which again is cranial nerve five. This portion here is the, um, uh, this is going to be your lingual 
nerve, part of cranial nerve five, and then just one more to highlight a little bit here. This is your inferior ovular. Can you see? This runs all the way down through the inside of your jawbone. So all around the inside, but inside, deep in through the bone. Um, and then there's a little fissure where portions of it can branch out to the, to the more superficial area. This the inferior, inferior ovular nerve is often in an area where a dentist will do a nerve block before they do certain procedures to numb the area. And then just another quick highlight or area to mention is many of us, of course, feel that there can be a fair amount of contribution through the cervical spine. So the upper cervical spine. So this is your first cervical vertebrae, your atlas. Your second vertebrae we call atlas. I just wanted to quickly highlight, right, where there are cranial, or not cranial nerve, but the cervical nerves. Uh, the beginning roots of cervical nerve one, hopefully you can see highlighting, and then uh, cervical nerve two, and of course there's more, whoop, that was the access that I just highlighted, I apologize, uh, but you can kind of see in blue here, I know it's a little faded, you know, I'll try to zoom in a tad here so you can see, but these upper cervical nerves, right, they reside also in the brainstem below the trigeminal nucleus, so the after a while, when someone has had pain for so long, some of these nerve signals can spill in over into other areas. We call it convergence. And that's why a lot of us believe, too, there's, there's so many multiple areas that we will treat for patients suffering from trigeminal neuralgia. So anything from working on the upper cervical spine, whether it's a good physical therapist or a great chiropractor who have found, uh, to work in collaboration with multidisciplinary practices to treat the soft tissue. Certainly seeing someone qualified with expertise in uh, treating temporomandibular disorders uh, to look through all of this area. So if we can affect a change through the trigeminal, uh, through your temporomandibular joint, the affiliated muscles, the cranial bones, the cranial sutures, some of the fossas where this nerve tissue exits, some very uh, specific and isolated neural tension stretching techniques that we will do and then good conjunction into the cervical spine and then of course ruling out other possibilities for example you know if you do have an underlying dental problem that's affecting that inferior alveolar nerve that we talked about through your jaw anything we can do to help the overall oral area and system be better feel better healthier is one less input into that trigeminal nerve system to try to make you feel better. So anyway, just a, a little something. I hope it's uh, somewhat helpful to give you an idea of where this nerve resides within our within our head and all the different branches and locations through you know V1, uh, V1, V2, V3, and why you know it's it's a very painful and unfortunate, uh, unfortunately very uncomfortable uh, situation to deal with. So thank you very much. Uh, good luck. Uh, I hope you're able to find some help and relief and uh, just continue to spread the word and awareness so people know that there are some options to try to get uh, better and get relief. Thank you, Michael Karagenis, Freedom Physical Therapy Services.